And so, our Father, at this time we say, glorify yourself. Let your word come to us in power. Let it come to us in might. Every yes that we hear, let them be delivered. Let them be saved. Let them be transformed. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, choir. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Uh, when the choir coordinator was singing, at the beginning of the song, he said, Step on the enemy. And I looked at the feet of one of the choirs. The sole of her feet was about six inches. Then I concluded in my heart that the enemy is in trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abby, if a six inches so enter the skull of the enemy, is he not in trouble? Hallelujah. The Lord bless you, choir. Can we celebrate the choir? I especially welcome you today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father. Apostle Anthony Olusheyi Fashikwe is unavoidably absent because he has gone to our Mowe branch. Last week we had our own first Sunday celebration, but because he's not omnipresent, so he has to be here and he has to balance it up. He went there today. I think you want to uh, 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 celebrate God for his life. While ministering last week, our daddy talked about commitment. He talked about commitment, but today we are looking at this slightly from a different angle. And we are looking at zeal for God. What is your zeal for God? This is year 2021. And I like the man of God that ministered to us in prayer. He quoted Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Before you can have a zeal for God, it must be that you have been renewed in your mind. Because without a renewal of your mind, you can't have a zeal for God. You need an understanding of who God is. That is when you can have a zeal for God. Many of us do not know who God is. We don't know what God does. So we have a little of un understanding about God. That is why our passion and our zeal for God is so minute. Until you have a renewal of mind you might not have a zeal for God. The Greek word for zeal is zealous. And as we have read from Numbers chapter 25 and verses 1 to 15, I want us to look at verse 13 there. Numbers chapter 25 and verse 13. Numbers 25 and verse 13 is talking about a particular man who has a zeal for God. And because he had that zeal for God, God gave him an office. It's not an ordinary office, but an everlasting office. And this is God talking here. He said, and he shall have it. What shall he have? The office of priesthood. That is what God is talking about. He said, this man shall have a office of priesthood. And even his seed after him shall continue to control our office. Even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Why? Because he has a zeal for God. That is why you cannot joke with your service for God this year. You can't serve God the way you have been serving him other times. Some people will wait for text messages or call before they come to church. Let me tell you, serving God is not for God, it's for you. Maybe you don't know it. 
Okay, since the time you have been coming to church, how many times have you prayed and said, God bless God? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't know. I have not done it, and I know you have not done it likewise. So, coming to the presence of God is for you. It's not for God. That is why you must change your perspective of God this year. That is why you need to be renewed in your mind and begin to see him as God. He's the owner of your life. You don't own yourself. Everything you own comes from him. You can't even determine and decide what happens to you. Until you begin to have that understanding, then your zeal for God will begin to change. Zeal. The Z for zeal, I call it zest. If you go into your dictionary, what is zest? Zest means enthusiasm. Are you enthusiastic about serving God? Are you joyful about coming into the presence of God? Some people, all their Saturday, they will use it gossiping. They will use it parting. But on Sunday, when you say, let's dress for church. Mommy, I can't find one pair of my shoe. When it's time for church on Sunday, somebody will go into our wardrobe, bring out all the clothes, and say, I don't even know what to wear. Saturday was there when she or he should have planned. On Sunday morning, she will now bring out crumpled clothes. I don't even know which one to choose out of this. Sunday morning. Sunday morning, some people will bring out bundle of clothes that it will take 365 days to wash. They will want to wash it on Sunday morning. Amen. Until you are passionate and enthusiastic about serving this God, you might not get any reward. He said, it is he that reward those that diligently seek him. Do you think it's a joke serving God? Are you sleeping now? It's no joke serving God. People that serve God get reward for it. You can't do garbage in garbage and expect to get something from God. God cannot be manipulated. Amen. You can deceive me, but God cannot be deceived. He's the seer of everything. So when coming to serve God, you must have this sort of enthusiasm. You must be passionate about it. Zest. That is it. Some people will say, who are those that are dear? Are you coming here to serve man? I don't even like to see that pastor give me preaching. Is it about him or about the word of God? You need to have that enthusiasm. The E there, I call it eagerness. How eager are you to come into the presence of God? The word of God in the book of Hebrews says, do not forsake the gathering of the children of God. This is where joy lies. This is where happiness is. He said in the presence of God, there is fullness. Not half joy, but he said fullness. So how eager are you to come? Look at the church. Look at how scanty it is. Even from the beginning of the year. Is it money that people are still chasing on Sunday? I have not seen any office that open on Sunday. So what makes people not to come? They want to rest. Who rests? Nobody rests. It's only the dead that rest. That is why we say rest in peace. Amen. It's only the dead that rest. Even some dead people don't rest. Say, so I want to use my Sunday to rest. Ah, you better don't rest now. Hallelujah. So you must be eager to come here. You must be eager to do things for God. Many a times we are too big to do things for God. I've seen churches where professors are the archers. 
professors, they are the ushers. They even be scrambling to do ushers. Eh? Hallelujah. People that are not even professional, not to talk of professors. <laughs> do you have that eagerness? You must have that zeal. The A, I call it anticipation. How anticipated are you? God does not want people to come to him without expecting anything from him. When you come here, you must have anticipation too because God wants to reward your coming. He does not expect bench warmers. He wants you to come. When you serve him diligently, he wants to reward too. No wonder people are not getting reward. God does not want to hold anybody. He wants to reward your labor of love. Serving God, let me tell you, is give and take. What you give, God, uh, what you give, God will reward you. God is not somebody that will take from you and turn the other face. He's not that kind of God. He said, I did not tell the children of Israel to seek me in vain. So your coming is not in vain. God wants to do something, but you must have that zeal. 2021, change your dynamics about serving God. Change your orientation. See God from another perspective. Serving God is an individual thing. I can't teach you to serve God. Because your understanding of God is different from mine. So if I'm teaching you to serve God, it's either I take you up or I bring you down. So it's an individual thing that you need to understand. And most times the way we understand God is by what he does in our life. When he heals you, you call him Jehovah Rapha. And that forms your thinking about him that God can heal. So when he provides for you, you call him Jehovah Jireh. You know that he's the provider of whatever you need. So that forms your thinking about God. But if you don't come to him, you can't have that understanding. That is why you must have a renewed mind towards him. If you will have zeal for God, the L there, I call it love for God and for your neighbor. Amen. If I ask every one of us, what exactly brought you to church? Amen. What brought you to church this morning? What brought you to church? Unless you have love for God. Now the question is, how many of us love God? How many of us? Are you asking yourself that question? Hmm? You can ask me too. Amen. Amen. Please ask me. Yes, I love yes, God. I, love God. <laughs> I know Sister Emily will ask. <laughs> so do you love God? How do you love God? Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5. Deuteronomy 6 and verse 5. He said, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Loves come from the heart. A love that comes from the leaf is a deceitful love. Amen. A love that comes from the lips is a deceitful love. So when you want to love God, you must love from your heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Now a man is consistent of three things. The body, the soul, and the spirit. Now, this is what the word of God is telling you. Love me with your body. Love me with your soul. And love me with your spirit. That is what God is telling you. 
Some people love God with their body and they block out the soul and the spirit. That's not genuine love. Until you love God with the entire of your being. The entirety. Some people love God to the extent that they don't even think of themselves anymore. Loving God is coming into the sanctuary. Making sure that everything in the work of God works perfectly. Seeking the progress of the work of God. I have seen churches that people will say, what does the church need self? Because of their love for God. How many times have you asked that? Amen. But instead you are saying, ah, the church is even stuffy. It will be stuffy now. When there is no much money to fix the AC, it will be stuffy. Have you looked at that? No. No. This chair does not even have foam. Is it not your bum bum that pressed the foam? Eh? Some people are quick to condemn. They are not bringing anything. Their offering is five naira. They have kept it since last Monday. Five naira. But they, they are the one that they will condemn when things are not working. Ah, oh God, the AC is not even working. What have you done to make it work? Amen. Do you even pray for your pastors? That's part of the zeal for God. You pray for them. That the Lord should use them mightily. The, the anointing should increase. Have you prayed for them this morning? It's always about you and yourself. You, you and you alone. Do you think your pastor is almighty? You think he doesn't have problems? You think he doesn't go broke? Ah, if you are thinking like that, you are missing it. That's why Apostle Paul said, always pray for us too. So your pastors need prayers too. Don't think they are perfect. Who told you the devil is not after the pastor? Eh? Eh? Hallelujah. <laughs> you think the devil is not after the pastor? Oh. You better know now. So you must have love for God. And for your neighbor. Some people don't even love their neighbor. Amen. Brother Chibudo, do you love me? Hallelujah. He said he loved me. I'm flattered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ask the person sitting beside you. Ask whether that person loves you. Eh? He said he loves you. She said no. It's even good they tell you the truth. <laughs> Amen. So you must love God. The most important thing. And you must love your neighbor. And many people are professing to love God. And they don't like the neighbor they deceive. And they are saying they love the God that they have not even seen. So you must begin to change your orientation and your perspective from today. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. He said, not sloth. Can we get another version like amplified? Not slothful in business. He said, do not lack diligence. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. He's talking about zeal. Have zeal for the Lord. If you have amplified version, I think that one is better. Let me check for amplified version. He said, never lag in zeal. And in earnest endeavor, be aglow and burning with spirit, serving the Lord. That's a very good version. Never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor, be aglow 
I'm burning with spirit, serving the Lord. So that is what God is expecting of you this year. He wants you to be aglow and burning with passion for him. Don't wait until somebody say, let's go for service. Be always ready. Be full of enthusiasm. Be passionate about serving God. Not until somebody talks to you or comes to invite you or send you a text message. That is what some people, some people don't even know is Sunday. Amen. Or you don't know. Some people don't know it's Sunday. Sister, let's go to church. Eh? Church eh? today. To do what? Say today is Sunday. Eh? So it's Sunday. Some people don't know. They prepare for all other days, but they don't prepare for Sunday. Are you one of them? Amen. So we must change our understanding about the things of God this year. Zeal is great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or object. Great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or object. It is eagerness. It is ardor. It is fervency. God himself have a zeal. And if you are claiming to be an image of God, then you must have zeal too. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 7. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 7. He said, of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from henceforth even forevermore. He said, the zeal of Jehovah we perform this. So God have zeal. Jesus have zeal. In John chapter 2 and verse 17. Jesus have zeal too. He said, and men, no, I said John, John chapter 2 and verse 17. He said, his, rem his disciples remember that it was written, zeal for thy house shall eat me up. So Jesus too have zeal. Now, if you claim to believe in God and you are a follower of Jesus Christ, nothing disturbs you from having zeal. In Psalm 69 and verse 9. Psalm 69 and verse 9. He said, for the zeal of thy house at eating me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are falling upon me. Now, this is it. If you have zeal for God, let me tell you, you will have enemies. When they see you dressing up for church, they will ask you, are you, are you the one that killed Jesus? When you go to church early and you come back late, they will ask you, are they sharing money in your church? <laughs> Hallelujah. So the reproach of them that reproach Jesus will come upon you because of your zeal. So you must be prepared for it too. Your father can reproach you. Your mother can reproach you. Wife reproach us. Hallelujah. So you must be expectful of that too. They will ask you, what are you doing in your church that is special? Everybody that have gone to church today have come back. They will ask you, but don't mind them. Just keep your fire burning. Amen. The Lord is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I pray for you in this new year, as you maintain your zeal for Christ, the Lord will rise up for you. He will remove reproach far from you. You will never be put to shame. You will never be disgraced. This morning, I want you to understand something. Before you can have that zeal, commitment comes first. Without commitment, there can't be zeal. There are five levels of membership. Membership of a church starts from the community. From the community, you grow to the crowd. From the crowd, you grow to be a congregation. From the congregation, you become the committed. It is when you are committed 
that you know that when a chair falls down in the church, you have to bring it up. When you see death on the floor in the church, you have to pick it up. That is commitment. From the committed, you grow to be the core. Not everybody can be the core. But commitment shows who will be the core. Amen. There is positive zeal and there is negative zeal. Many people have zeal, but the zeal is used in a wrong way. So you must understand that. Romans chapter 10 and verses 2 to 3. Many people are feeling sleepy because the truth is not always funny. Amen. He said, For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. This is a bad zeal. He said, They have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. He said, Because they are ignorant. Verse 3. For being ignorant of God's righteousness, and seeking to establish their own, they did not subject themselves to the righteousness of God. Now listen to this. I tell you that some people have zeal, but it's a wrong zeal. You see that they are active in church, but the zeal is targeted and directed in a wrong direction. So they are always bringing crisis and commotion. They want to establish their own righteousness, which is outside the righteousness of God. People will see that they have zeal, truly. But their zeal is always scattering things. The church is 50 in number. But when the people enter, the attendance will reduce to 20. Because they have a wrong zeal. Now, the question you should ask yourself, do I have a positive zeal or a negative zeal? Ask yourself. Amen. Amen. That's the question you should ask yourself. Judas was following Jesus Christ. He had passion. He was enthusiastic. He had zeal. But it was a rebel zeal. The word of God said he was a thief from the beginning. He never cared about the poor. But he was after the money. He was just following Jesus because he was the treasurer. Every money comes into his pocket. But when you see him, you will say this man has zeal. I be no busy. Gehazi was with the prophet. You see, the work of PA is very difficult. Many PA will not make heaven. That office is dangerous. It makes them too powerful. It makes them a liar. It makes them manipulative. They manipulate their boss and everybody that have things to do with their boss. Or guys not around. Or guys inside. Or guy no day. Until you grease their palm. Or God day, but the man Dave is there. No, uh, you go see him now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Am I speaking, I speaking the, truth? the truth? Say, Pastor, Say speak, pastor on. speak on. Ah, you are angry already. That's a bad zeal. Gehazi. It was with the prophet. But you would think he's learning. But he wasn't truly learning. He has his own motive of staying with that prophet. But let me tell you something quickly. We'll soon close. Every of your actions you need to be mindful of them. God does God not judge does action. Not action. You know what God does? He, he judges the intent. He said, he said, I don't look from the outside. I look from within. So God will not judge your action. He will go inside you and see the reason why you committed that action. That is the intent. That is the motive. God is interested in motive, not the action. So if you are professing to have a zeal, God is not going to look at what you are doing. He wants to look at the reason you are doing this. 
Amen. Amen. So, so when you are a man pleaser, everybody will see you as somebody that is working. Ah, that boy is hard working. But many people are working and not getting reward. Because they are just men pleasers. They are not God pleasers. That is why they are not getting reward. Because God is looking at the intent for which you are doing that. And when God sees that he does not align with his own thing, he doesn't give reward for that. So the reward you can only get is the reward of men. Are we together? That is why you must drift this year and make your zeal genuinely and 100 percent for God. Seek God. Seek him genuinely. Don't come because of apostle. Come because you want to serve God. Apostle is a man. He has his limitations. Amen. At some point, he will grow old and he will be no more. That means you won't be in pavilion no more. Abi? Because when apostle is gone, you too, you will be gone. And God will remain. Hallelujah. So why don't you serve that God that will remain? And not serve apostle that will go. I am going one day. It's certain. It's only that I will miss my wife. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why are you all laughing? <laughs> it's so touching. Oh, pastor is romantic. <laughs> Hallelujah. According to the scripture where we read, Things were not going wrong, but a man had a zeal. And he put things right, and God gave him an office. You never can tell what God can bestow into your care by the reason of your zeal. We might be a small church, but God knows where you are going. He sees the future. Your future is in his hand. Don't limit yourself. That is why you must have a zeal for him. Amen. Amen. You might not be a pastor today, but tomorrow God can give you a church. But until he sees your zeal and your commitment, until he sees your passion and your enthusiasm towards him. So you must have that understanding. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 20 to 27, we are talking about Gehazi. He was always following the prophet. In the chapter 4 of it, there was a woman that was helpful to the prophet. And the prophet said, what does this woman like? You can see. You. The prophet, Gehazi was to be a student prophet, but he was acting the office of a PA. He was supposed to be a trainee prophet, but he was doing the work of a PA. So he said, sir, I, pe I perceive that the woman does not have child. The prophet prayed for the woman, the woman have child. And going to chapter 5, the Syrian captain came. He was having leprosy. And he came to the prophet to be prayed for. And the prophet said, go and dip yourself in the river Jordan and get healed. After the man was healed, he brought offering. The prophet said, no. Go with it. You know what Gehazi does? He went after the man. And he said to the man, my master said, that thing you wanted to offer then that I should collect it that he has two visitors now. That one said, ah, I brought it for your master now, initially. What do I want to use them for? He said, take it. And he took it. And got back home and he went to hide it. But you know what? Why Naaman was riding in chariot? This man ran on foot and caught up with horses. You can see zeal, oh, bad zeal, wrong zeal. How can you run on foot and catch up with horses? Eh? Una. 
How that one day possible? Money matters. Because it's a wrong Z. He caught up with horses and collected the gift and came back home and he hid the gift. And the prophet called him. Is that Gehazi? Is that sir? Gehazi, sir. I'm with you, sir. Gehazi, come here, sir. Say, where have you been? Sir, I've been fasting and praying since morning. Or God anointing the flow here. That one said, has my spirit not been following you? Is this a time to collect gifts? It's not about the gift. It's not that the man of God does not want him to collect gifts, but the timing of the gift is wrong. Eh? Eh? Some people, they will bring gifts for their master. The PA, PA will collect it and will not show the master. That's why I say the job of PA is it's a dangerous job. Many of them might not make it. Hallelujah. <laughs> so he collected the gift. Wrong zeal. And the man said the leprosy of Naaman will stick with him and with his family. Look at what he brought upon his family because of a wrong zeal. So what type of zeal do you have really? You should check yourself. If we are saying you should have zeal. Not just any zeal, but have the positive one. The one that will bring progress, bring increase. That's what we are saying. Amen. Amen. The Lord will help us. So as we close this morning, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 11. He said, for behold, this self same thing that you were made sorry after a godly sort. Sorry. Uh, what earnest care is wrought in you? Yeah, what clearing of yourself? What indignation? What fear? What longing? What zeal? What avenging? In everything you are proving yourself to be pure. In the, in the matter. So he's talking about a pure zeal. The Bereans in Acts chapter 17 and verse 10 to 12, they have a zeal. Even after Paul has preached to them, they still carry their Bible and read. Many of you, do you still go back to check your sermon notes? Amen. Do you know that many pastors, they goof? Hmm? You are laughing. Me, I like telling the truth. You know, pastors goof. Hmm? Some pastors, they cook up stories to make it interesting. Sometimes, many pastors are not prepared. So when they call scripture often, it's not correct. But because you are a responsible church, you flow along with us. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So you must have a zeal. Part of the zeal is following the policy of the church. The fasting and prayer is not for God. Though. You can't fast for God. Even when Jesus was to be crucified, the Apostles did not fast for him. This fasting is for yourself. It's for your spiritual upliftment. Spiritual growth. And aside that, it works for you medically. Because it will trim you down and all the toxins that you might have consumed over the festivities. All those can coke, can whatever you have drank. It will purge them out now. Amen. So endure what to be part of it. It's just one month. One month fasting will not kill you. And it's not as if you won't be eating. It's just for you to fast from morning to evening and you break it in the evening. Amen. See, according to our leaders in faith, fasting has been made easy. You know how. If you can't fast till 6, you can break at 12. You can break at three. You can break at six. 
And even if you want to break at six and you are feeling weary or tired, you can just take a little water. Hmm? Just take a little water. Not that because I say you should take water, you should not take 25 liters and be drinking. The water will not quench the hunger. And it will even bring more hunger. Amen. But the main thing is be truthful to yourself and be honest and have the zeal. Do the fasting. The Lord will bless you. As you go this week, the Lord will cause his face to shine on you. He will lift up his countenance upon you. And he will bless you. He will make way for you this week. The Lord will lighten up your life. And he will give you a strong passion for him. The Lord will reward your reward of labor. Everything you put into serving God, the Lord will reward you. In the name of Jesus. I see a great turn around in your life. See, when people are crying this year, you will rejoice. When people are complaining, you will praise God. In the name of Jesus, it shall be well with you. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Bring out your tithes. If you are here, the Lord has been faithful to you. Bring out your tithes quickly. Do we have tithers in the house? Come quickly with your tithes. Father, we thank you for your children and for the job that have produced this. And in obedience to your commandment, they have brought their tithe. Father, we pray that you will sanctify these tithes and you will receive it from them. The rest that is with them, you will multiply it. And they will use it for greater things. They will never lack Every devourer that have been plaguing their life, you will destroy. And you will move them to their next level. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please package your offering where you are as the choir gives us a melodious song. He is worthy of my praise. Let's go, Lord, oh my soul. Let's rise to our praise. Why not do something for Jesus? Come on. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. He is worthy of my praise. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. He is worthy of my praise. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. He is worthy of my praise. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Jesus Christ. 
a burnt sacrifice with a smelling savour, you will receive it in the name of Jesus. Everyone that has partaken in these offerings, Father, you will reimburse and replenish our purses in the name of Jesus. Every work and every undertakings of us we bring gains and profit to us this week in the name of Jesus. Those that are due for promotion, you will promote them. Those that are in businesses, you will make their business flourish. Those that have personal business, you will expand and enlarge them. Father, we thank you because it is done. For everyone that wants to give but do not have, Father, you will make a greater way for them. And we will all be blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated as I run through the announcement quickly. As Amen. Amen. Like I earlier said, our yearly, yearly fasting program starts tomorrow. And it's a month program. It starts Monday 11th to February 10th. We are looking at the convenience of having people to come every evening for prayers. But if you are not able to come, maybe you drop your WhatsApp number, then we begin to drop prayer points that will be praying each day. Please, before you go see Brother Desmond, he will create a WhatsApp group so that we begin to drop prayer points there. Every prayers will be praying. Then on Sunday we pray for the duration of the fasting. Every third Friday now is a night of worship. going to be a praise worship and prayer night but it's going to be more of worship as a guest artist will be coming for appearances we enjoy you to be part of it and, and uh, always invite your friends your neighbors to let them come to be part of it the Lord bless you as you do this in the name of Jesus and as regards that, we would not mind your widow's mind. Because after you have come to dance and worship and exhaust your energy, you need to refresh too. So we want to have some light refreshment. So we wouldn't mind your widow's mind. And for those that are desirous to be part of the intercession team, of the church, you can also see Brother Desmond. That's the prayer group. Please see Brother Desmond. Every Tuesday, 6 to 8 p.m. is our reasoning in the scriptures, a Bible study program where we come together as children of God. We thank you all that have been coming to be part of this program and we are and joining others too to come and be part of this program. What we do there basically is we bring up a topic and we discuss it based on the word of God. That is what we do. And on Thursdays, in his presence, is a prayer program, 6 to 8 p.m. too. We bring our prayer supplications and we pray about them. Every Wednesday, 6.30 to 7.30 a.m., one hour prayer program, morning dew. Every Friday, power, miracle, and deliverance night vigil. But the third Friday is going to be a night of worship, every third Friday. 
So be part of these programs. The last Sunday of this month is going to be our New Year Thanksgiving. The one we had last Sunday was first Sunday. So we are having our New Year Thanksgiving. Put on your agbada. Let your gele. Let it reach the sky. Last Sunday. Invite friends. Invite family. And as you do this, the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Shall we just rise to our feet quickly? Amen. Amen. What is the time? Eh? Eh? We did not exceed time. Can you clap for the pastors? Hallelujah. As you go this week, the Lord will go with you. Everywhere you step, the Lord is taking over for you. In the name of Jesus, men that matters will rise up for you. Every door you knock on shall be opened unto you. The land shall bring its increase of goodness upon you. And the dew of heaven will fall upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have a blessed way. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, the Lord's goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Shalom. Shalom.